So I have an update. I have an update about a story I did back in December about our attorney general in the state of Virginia. Well, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, Mr. Mark Herring, when he rescinded the concealed K reciprocity agreements that we have with 25 states, our governor, Terry McAuliffe, on Friday, February 26, 2016, signed into law House Bill 1163 and Senate Bill 610 that accepts concealed carry permits from other states that are in reciprocity agreements with the state of Virginia. And the reciprocity agreements that Mr. Mark Hang revoked have now been reversed. This whole thing may require some backstory. So here it is. The whole idea to rescind those agreements came from John Podesta's Center for American Progress, 28 ideas for state executive action to prevent gun violence and fight gun crime. And I post a link to that actual report in the description box below. But he rescinded those agreements back in December, just seven days after John Podesta's report came out. Now, the reason why I'm saying John Podesta, I'm saying his name is because John Podesta is also Hillary Clinton's campaign manager right now today. And in Virginia, what we have is Washington, D.C. to our immediate north. It's on a border between us and Maryland. When you're talking about Virginia politics, a lot of times you're talking about Northern Virginia politics because Northern Virginia is essentially Washington, D.C. So anything that goes on up in Northern Virginia basically benefits the federal government. So when you see people like Mark Herring trying to do a lot of stuff in Northern Virginia, matter of fact, he's actually from Tennessee, but he did a lot of politics stuff in Northern Virginia, Alexandria, Honduras, I mean Herndon, all these places in Northern Virginia. So it seems like you're trying to get in good with the Washington machine. Maybe you can get a job on Capitol Hill. Maybe you could become some kind of higher ranking person in Washington, D.C. You know, right now you are a Virginia attorney general, even though you're not from Virginia, from Tennessee. Maybe you're trying to go higher than that. And if you get in good with John Podesta, maybe you'll be able to get there. So personally, I think that for his own political career going forward, he tried to forsake the future of many Virginians and people that come from other states that come into Virginia. Right. Because reciprocity agreements, what that means is we have agreements with different states. If their citizens come to our state with a concealed carry permit from the other state, that we will honor it. So basically, if you come from North Carolina and you come into Virginia, we won't you won't get in trouble for having a gun on you and not having a visitor permit from the state of Virginia. As long as you have your North Carolina permit, because we are in an agreement with North Carolina. But when Mark Herring rescinded those agreements, North Carolina was out in the cold. So if you live in the Corolla, Nags Head, which is right there in the outer branch of North Carolina on the border with Virginia, you will not be able to bring your gun into the Commonwealth of Virginia. You got to go to Richmond and then fill out a visitor concealed carry form and go through a whole big process. Now, what if you're coming from a faraway state like Missouri or somewhere like that? Yeah, go through the same process. That's inconvenient. And it forces people to try and change their laws. It's an end around system to try and change people's laws in other states to try to get around a second amendment, to try and disarm regular citizens. Because as we know from the situation that happened in Kansas with the mass shooter, criminals don't follow laws. This man was a convicted felon and could not own a gun, but somehow he got his hands on the gun and went on a shooting spree and killed many people and wounded many others. So when we're talking about laws, I mean, who are you trying to actually protect? Are you trying to protect the citizens? I can't really tell because the citizens will be the only ones that actually follow the laws. They don't want to get in trouble. They don't want to go to jail. But a felon who does not care about the laws, he wants to go get a gun and kill people. He doesn't care about jail. He doesn't care about his life. He doesn't care about anything. The action that Mr. Mark Herring did was just ridiculous. It was a strong backlash from the gun community and also from the Republican controlled Senate and House in the state of Virginia. Right. And also from the Republican controlled House and Senate in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Even our governor, Terry McAuliffe, who's a Democrat, had to do something because he understands he wants to get reelected. He doesn't want to be out there in the cold. We just won the 2014 midterms, landslide Republicans everywhere. So when you are faced with those type of odds, when you are pretty much going to be out of there, when you got a Republican House Senate, you got the country going to the right, you must make concessions. So he met with the Republicans. He met with a lot of people and was able to get House Bill 1163 and Senate Bill 610 passed. So all your CCWs, all your CCPs from different states will be valid in the state of Virginia. And there are also different states where you must have reciprocity for Virginia's guns permits to be valid there. So if the agreement is rescinded on one side, it's also on the other side. So prime example, somewhere like Florida, for example, I'm not quite sure if they are in the people that had that two way reciprocity. But let's just say, for example, Florida, if Mark Herring was to rescind the agreement with Florida to where people from Florida cannot come to Virginia with their guns and be OK, 
with a Florida concealed carry or concealed weapons permit. That also means that people in Virginia cannot go to Florida with our guns because it must be a two way street. Right. So it not only prevented out of towners from coming into Virginia with their concealed carry permits from a different state. It also prevented Virginians from going out of town with their concealed carry permits. So Terry McAuliffe on Friday, February 26, 2016, one month after he said that he would sign it, he signed a bill into law that says all the agreements have been restored. The only two caveats to that are Commonwealth of Virginia's police must be present at a gun show to perform background checks at the behest of the person that's operating the gun show. So they're not required to be there, but they are required to be there if somebody asked them to be there. And also, if you've had a domestic violence charge within the past two years, you will not be eligible to get a concealed carry permit in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So those are the only two caveats. And I say that that's OK. You know, there's not too much of a of a hook to try and get people on the back end when everything blows over. You try to revive it. I think Terry McAuliffe understands that his job is on the line in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We don't really play too much to liberals. Liberalism is pretty much concentrated in Northern Virginia, where all the money is, where all the federal government influences. When you're living down here where I'm at in the Southern part of Virginia, Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Chesapeake, Hampton Roads, military area, very conservative. When you go to Central Virginia, same thing. Not military, but very conservative. And very far Western Virginia is basically like West Virginia, very rural, very small, mountainous, also very conservative. The only liberal part of the state is past Fredericksburg, which is basically Washington, D.C. So, you know that Northern Virginia can't stand on its own and be surrounded by a sea of red. Even most of Maryland is becoming red. They even have a Republican governor. I think Larry Hogan is his name. So you can't just say Washington, D.C. is going to control two states. OK, at a certain point, we're going to have our voices be heard. We're not going to have John Podesta or Hillary Clinton or Terry McAuliffe or Mark Herring to take away our gun rights, to destroy the Second Amendment. We're not going to allow that to persist. People like me and others will continue to speak out. We're not going to let our eyes off of this story. We hope that everything goes through the way it's supposed to, that nobody gets harassed for having their guns, that there aren't any kind of new and crazy requirements to get your guns. Because the way it is now, Virginia is a pretty lax state as far as concealed carry and open carry. Open carry, you can pretty much do whatever. You don't need any kind of permit for open carry. You can open carry pretty much anything except for in Washington, D.C. I mean, North Virginia, same thing. You can't have certain types of guns. But for the most part, you can have any kind of gun you want and open carry. And concealed carry, all you need is a permit and it does not take much to get your license. Thank goodness that we were able to carry that in 25 other states and maybe even other states that were not included in the initial sweep. I think it was like four states that were remaining after the big sweep of 25. So you may have about 30 states plus that we can go to without necessarily having to have their concealed carry permit or whatever the equivalent is in their state. So that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Again, this, this is an update video. I did a video about this before in December. And if you want to see that video for a little bit of uh, context, you can click on the upper right hand corner and go straight to it. In the comments below, do you think this is a good move? Do you think that it was, do you think there will be any kind of hidden agendas, any kind of strings that are attached that we can't see, invisible strings, invisible wire? Let me know in the comments below. That's all I gotta say about this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.